Okay, in this video we're going to go over the basics of downloading, uh, compiling, and running the example uh, C++ simulation of a simple projectile that is only under, I guess, gravity influence. There's no linear friction effects. So this video is only meant to go over the process of setting up the code and running it, uh, changing the inputs, running it again. A more detailed code walkthrough will be reserved for potentially later video. So first of all we go to the website of the blog. Here's the URL for this particular post and we want to download this file. So we'll, we'll click on it and you may get a different web page than what I'm about to receive because I have right access to this file. So anyway you should have a way to download it if you see this particular file or this particular web page then this is the way to do it. Select file download Anyway, so we save our file, and we're going to want to save it um, to a particular directory. I'm just going to overwrite the one I personally have here, but mine's in the C slash data directory. I'm running Windows XP, so yeah, I will replace it. At this point, where we have the code downloaded, we want to compile it. So, next thing we want to do is open up our integrated development environment. I'm using Dev C++, and I included a link to the download on it, the web post, we go to our directory and you can simply drag and drop your code onto the Dev C++ window. And there we have our code. As you can see the name of it is here and here is all the code. Again we'll save a walkthrough for later but you can see here's the, the basic setup. It's a main, you know, the main file. It's a self-contained file. There's not multiple C++ files. For simplicity it's all just in one file. Near line 76, there's a hard-coded setting to write a default input file. You can see some of the default variables here. I'm going to change the, one of the default variables. Instead of doing 300 runs, we're going to do 30 runs just for this initial setup. But the code should be such that you can simply compile it and run it. So to compile, you select Execute and then Compile. And this window comes up telling you it's compiling. It should take somewhere between 2 to 10 seconds initially. So compilation is finished, so we click close. And what did that do? We go to the C data directory. Dev C++ compiled this executable in the same directory as into which we downloaded our original file. So we have this executable here. We can now double click it and it launches a system window here. At the very top of the screen the, out, the inputs are written, some of the calculations are given for the V0 mean, the data mean, uh, and then each individual run is executed. Just to go briefly go over it, uh, launch speed, initial launch speed, V0, and initial launch angle, data, those two are what we call stochastic variables. They are not deterministic in having a single value. Uh, they are characterized instead by describing the statistics of these particular variables. And the way we've chosen to describe them in this simple example is to only specify their standard deviations. Their means are calculated by the code, and I think I included the particular equations used in the blog, but the means are calculated such that if no standard deviation is present, if these are deterministic variables, then with no standard deviation we will definitely get a direct hit. And that's actually what is done with what we call run zero, the nominal run, in which no variation is present. But anyway, uh, in this particular example, 30 runs were executed, the missed distance was computed for each, and these are the statistics of that missed distance. The mean missed distance, the standard deviation of that missed distance, and the ratio. We also included, uh, to give an indication of the sampling time performance, the, the bias in the missed distance, particularly uh, the way we set up the missed distance calculation, there's some interpolation involved and you'll get a non-zero missed distance as a result of a, no, a, a non-zero nominal missed distance. Basically when we're guaranteed a hit from the V0 mean and data mean uh, specifications for V0 data, uh, there, there is some residue that is not due to our launcher effects but due to the simulation calculation results. 
so when we ran this, uh, we, we, we set one of our input variables, write output to zero, and you're wondering, okay, so where did all these come from? These are summary files for each particular run, each of these 30 runs. Uh, there's a simple text file with uh, more or less kind of restating what inputs went into it, what V0 was calculated, what data was calculated uh, from the particular, uh, or I'm sorry, what, what, what V0 and data were drawn statistically from the mean and standard deviations that we were given. I also had some other things such as uh, some of the final, uh, the final time to fly, uh, missed distance, uh, maximum achieved, uh, altitude, and so forth. So those are summary files. If we had turned right output to one, we would receive .bin files that had the X and Y position for, for each time sample of along that particular run's trajectory. Those can be, for example, loaded in some external programs such as MATLAB, such that all trajectories can be plotted on a single plot. I also wrote our input file. Uh, and if you set a section in the code that wrote the input, uh, if one to zero, if we set that to zero and recompiled it, then we would run the sim based on what's in this particular file. So that can be used, say, for writing a MATLAB wrapper that will recursively uh, call this .exe and we compile and, point, you know, and, and, and run it based on these particular inputs. So that's kind of a way to control running the simulation from some wrapper program written saying MATLAB. So that's kind of the overview of, of how the sim, how to compile the sim, how to run it. And just to give an example of how to change it to uh, a different run, let's, let's make the time sample a little more coarse. Um, oh, and there's a quick gotcha I wanted to mention. You don't want to, so let's say I wanted to look at V0 standard deviation. I want it to be 1 meters per second. If I enter just this, there's an issue with the type of the variable, particularly, uh, particularly that's an integer, not a float like it was expecting. So if I want to look at 1 meter per second, I want to enter it as 1.0 and not just 1. And uh, since we did a coarser, uh, actually let's just do 200 ones. Since we did a coarser time sampling, uh, it should each individual run should run more quickly. So we'll go with these particular inputs. So that's 1.0 meters per second of launch, in, uh, launch speed, standard deviation, 0 0.2 degrees of launch angle variation. So we say file, save, and we can just go to compile and run, instead of just compile and run. And that should launch our next run. I think it's having issues since I already had another window open. At the end of the run it says press enter to continue, so I'll do that. Maybe that's why it stopped it. So we'll try this again. is running more quickly this time. Okay, I paused the video because I think uh, the system was, uh, the RAM was overloaded with the screencast recorder. But anyway, our simulation ran to completion. You can see the output results here at the end. And uh, again, the nominal miss distance. Anything you want to look at is if your miss distance is, uh, if your nominal miss distance is a significant fraction of, let's say, your mean or standard deviation miss distance, then you're likely getting some calculation artifacts into your output results, and that's something you, you do not want. You also want to set your run number, uh, total number of runs, in this case 200, to be large enough such that uh, what I've been using is that the standard deviation to mean uh, converges to what it would be in, say, the case of uh, a large num run number. This particular simulation has uh, an issue I'm trying to work out right now where the maximum run number is limited to, I think, uh, 1,280 runs. And uh, I suspect it's some sort of memory issue or something of that sort. But for the time being, I'm making sure that my standard deviation to mean, say, for 10 runs and for 100 runs and for 1,000 runs, uh, is in fact stabilizing. And that's kind of a way to make sure that some computational artifacts aren't skewing 
the computed output from your simulation. So anyway, this is just a simple uh, simulation, hopefully to serve as a refresher on using the C++ syntax, and maybe it is a framework for doing more uh, exciting things uh, instead of these simple deterministic equations, maybe something like differential equations. Uh, we actually have a differential equation software. But, uh, anyway, so that's it. Thanks.